So this is a bit of an impromptu video here, but I was just playing around with the new Generate Blocks 2.0 release, and I was trying to do a layout where I was using the Tabs block. Now that Tabs block has been completely rebuilt, just like all the other blocks in this 2.0 release, and one of the things that's changed is the little toggle we had before that allowed you to sync the styles between all your different tabs. That's not really a problem because we have classes and we can do that ourselves, except there's a couple little gotchas and those actually cost me about an hour earlier trying to figure out exactly what was going wrong. So I thought I'd record this video as kind of contemporaneous notes to save myself from the frustration next time I go and use the tabs block, but I imagine there's gonna be other people that run into some of these roadblocks as well as I did. Everything you need to do is still totally possible, but there's a couple places where you really wanna pay attention to where you're adding your class and where you might not want to change some of the default settings that come in this block. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at what I would suggest as far as setting up these tabs blocks going forward. So what we're gonna do here is just add a tabs block and we have three different options here. We have the horizontal tabs, the vertical tabs, and the button tabs. I tend to have a lot more luck with the button tabs than I do any of the others. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select our button tabs here. Now let's pop open our list view and take a look at what we get. Whenever we add that tabs block, we get this tabs block here and inside of it, we have a tabs menu and a tabs items. Both of these are essentially wrappers that wrap around all the items inside of it. Inside the tabs menu, we have the first menu item and the second menu item. Inside the tabs item wrapper, we have a tab item and second tab item. Now inside of all of these are some text blocks. For whatever reason, inside these are just a default core paragraph block and inside these are a generate blocks headline block. And that's controlling whatever the label is here on this button and then whatever content you put inside of these tabs. Now we wanna make sure that we give these buttons a class because if we don't, there's no way to control the style of them globally. So let me just give you an example right now. If I went on this one and we said we wanted this spacing to be, or this padding to be 80 pixels. That's M, so we'll go with pixels. We can see this got all that padding here, but this one didn't. And that's because this is a unique class and this is a unique class, so they're not sharing any styles here. So we wanna make sure we don't style on this class itself or the other one. We wanna add a class to it that we can add to each one of these buttons and style from there. So I'm just gonna undo these changes here if we can go back. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a class to this tab menu item, make sure we're not on that text block. I've done that several times. And we'll just call this tab hyphen button. You can call it whatever you'd like. But instead of just creating a new class, we're gonna move all those local styles to the class that we're creating because not only does it have the styles that are just on this button by default, but it has a hover style and then it has an active style. And we would just wanna move all that over to our class. So go ahead and do that and hit start editing. We'll go over to our second button here. Again, make sure we're actually on that wrapper and we're gonna add that tab button class and we're gonna remove the block styles here. So now, as long as we're selecting this tab button, we can go ahead and do those changes and it's gonna affect all of them. So again, if I went to padding here and I changed this to 80 pixels, you can see it's affected each one of these, which is exactly what we want. Now, I'm not gonna go through and actually style this as anything that important here. I will go ahead and change this back to like 16 pixels, just so we have something decent in here to start out with. But pay attention up here where we have our hover focus. There are already some styles attached to that just by default. I didn't add anything, those come with it. And there's some here as well. And these are when your current block is selected. So whenever you're on that tab is what this last class here is for. So you'll probably wanna go through and style those as well. Now, where I really got hung up was on these tab items. So in the example that I was using, I wanted this to be like a two column layout with some text over on the left and an image over on the right. So what I did was I just went in here and I changed this to display grid and we'll go ahead and set our grid template columns. So we'll just do a two column grid like this. I'm gonna swap out this text for a container just so we can see these two columns inside of it, which is great. I will go ahead and put text in here. We'll just say tab one content, and I'll put it over here as well. Tab one content. Okay, so that's perfect. And if I go to the second tab item, obviously I wanna do the same thing. So we probably actually want to put all of that on a class, right? So we'll go back to this tab item and I'll just say, uh, I'm gonna call this wrong because this is definitely wrong. We'll call this tab item, wrong tab item. We'll go ahead and hit create. And just like before, we're gonna move those local block styles to this, perfect. We'll go on this one, we'll add that wrong tab item. 
and we'll make sure we don't have any of those default block styles and it doesn't look like anything set on here. So we should be good. But you can see the problem is now we're seeing this tab one content and we're seeing the tab two content. And the reason that's happening, and this is what was driving me nuts forever, it's not showing and hiding either one of these. And that's because it's using those default classes. It's adding a class on the front end whenever we're doing this to change that display from default to none. But once I change the display to grid, that's not working anymore. Like it's just staying display grid all the time. So now we're seeing them all the time, which is definitely not what we want. So what I need to do is go ahead and remove this class from both of these. And once I remove that, you can see now we're only seeing the content for the appropriate tab, which is great. Now, if we want that two column grid, instead of actually doing that on this tab item itself, we need to add a container inside of it. And now we can put that tab item class on it. So I'll just do tab item, go ahead and hit create. We can start blank with that and we'll go ahead and change this to display grid and we'll do our two column layout, perfect. And then we can move these two columns inside of there instead of recreating them. So I'll just drag those inside of there, perfect. And then let's go ahead and just copy this entire block and we'll go to our second tab item here and paste that in. And I'll just make sure to change this to two and two so we can see it. And now it's gonna work where we can switch between one and two without a problem because we're actually writing that grid class to a container that's inside of these items. You just don't wanna change the display of these tab items. So I think the rule I'm gonna have for myself is just don't touch these tab items if I don't have to. We'll do all the styling to a container inside of it. It's one extra div, it's not gonna make or break anything. Now, the nice thing about this is you get these two you know, default tabs with two default contents inside of it. But if you go up here to the tabs and we add some more, which is this button, add tab item, we can go ahead and click that a few times here and we'll change this to three and we can change its content to three. You can see it went ahead and took the things that were in my other tab items, this wrapper with the class on it and then the two containers inside of it. It added those to the new tabs by default which maybe in some cases you don't want that, but in here it's pretty handy because I do want these all to be the same. So I'll just go in here and change the text that's actually in it to tab five content. And then we can see we're tabbing through all of these perfectly. So hopefully that will help you save some frustration. The two main points there are on this tab menu item, you want to give that a class and you wanna move all the local block styles to that class. Then you can go through all your other tab buttons and remove the local block styles and add that class to it. That way you can control everything with one class here. So as long as I'm editing this class and we can go to backgrounds and you know make this yellow, we're gonna affect each one of these. And then the second big thing is here on these tab items, don't change the display property of these because that's gonna screw things up. If you do need a different display property, just put a container inside of it and put a class on it and do all your styling at that point. So it's all pretty straightforward once I watch this back, but there are those couple little places where if you change that display property on your tabs items, or if you don't do the buttons just right at the top by adding the classes, it can really mess things up. Like I said, this cost me about an hour of time earlier, and I'm just hoping that I can help you avoid some of that time wasting and frustration that I had earlier today. So hopefully you got a little bit of something out of this video. If you wanna make sure to catch up with all the latest changes inside Generate Blocks, both good and sometimes frustrating, then make sure you hit subscribe to the channel and we'll see you then.